Hey guys, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician, and today I'm excited to announce my Reason 10.2 review. Now, Propellerhead Software just released Reason 10.2 today. I've been playing around with it in the beta for the past couple of weeks, and played around with it a bit this morning. Basically, it does everything it was supposed to do in the beta, uh, as well as it did, and it performs better now than it did in the beta, but not better than before. So we're gonna get into the review in a second, uh, but the first thing I wanna let you know is to celebrate the release of Reason 10.2, um, I've come up with a few uh, combinator instruments that you can download, and I put a link down below. One of them is this really cool kind of nasty 808 bass sound. Um, another is kind of a cool lead synth, and finally I put together um, like, I guess a half dozen or so loops and samples that you can use. So there's a link down below if you want to get that. Now let's jump to the review. Reason 10.2. Well, what does it add? It adds multi-lane editing, meaning you can edit the MIDI data of multiple tracks uh, kind of at once. You can see multiple tracks and edit the data of one MIDI channel at a time. And I'll get into all of this in more detail. Um, you can adjust multiple faders at the same time, which is awesome. You have an adaptive grid for MIDI editing, which basically means by default, the drawing size of the notes and the grid that you get will be based on how zoomed in you are to the MIDI lane. That's a big time saver. And finally, um, there's a new button that appears all over that basically says add device to section. So whether you're on the mixer, the rack, or the sequencer, you can click this button and uh, you'll be able to create a new device or a new audio track. All right, so let's get into these actual new features and how do they perform? Actually, before that, let's just say that um, performance of Reason 10.2 is the same as it was in 10.1 and as it was in 10.0, which is to say it's great if you're just doing Reason devices, rack extensions, it still doesn't play very well with VSTs. However, Propeller Heads has announced that they are working very diligently at creating what I would assume would be Reason 10.3, which will come out later this year and should really streamline the audio engine and make VSTs perform more in line with the way they do in other audio systems. So, no VST improvements here, no performance changes. Now let's actually move on to the real features. So, how does the multi-lane editing work? Well, it works pretty well, and I'll do a video of this probably later this week or early next week showing it in action and showing how you can actually work it, but once you figure it out, it's pretty intuitive. You basically select multiple MIDI channels from the sequencer. There's a little button up at the top of the sequencer that'll say multi-lane edit. Then you click into edit and basically you've got the active lane that you're actually able to manipulate and then sort of grayed out you see the other notes from the other lanes that you've selected. Then if you want to switch which lane you're editing over on the left side of the transport where it lists all the devices, there's sort of a strip and you just click on that and that other device becomes the main MIDI channel. I find it very intuitive, very fast, easy to use. It's not the best implementation of multi-lane editing, I think, and that's just really because I don't think there's quite enough color coding information on the uh, the notes. Like if you see how Logic does it, I think Logic does it probably in the best way because it just gives you more visual feedback. But I think it's a very successful implementation of multi-lane editing and you reason this is a super helpful function, especially as you're trying to arrange chords into different instruments, you know, having the bass line from a piano chord and then you can easily see like what the rhythm is and throw that on bass if you're doing it by programming um, or if you're trying to figure out if you're trying to make sure that all of your instrument hits line up on time which is really important for certain types of music um, I just did a feature on quantizing and this is sort of if you're not into quantizing but you want to fudge things a bit it's really helpful for that okay second feature multi fader uh, mixing this is really cool. So basically you can just select multiple tracks on the mixer and have it so that their volumes all go up equally as opposed to just doing one at a time and having them be all over the place. 
Now you could always use a bus, but that wasn't always the best way of doing multiple lanes. And this is just as quick, simple. You select a few, you bring them all down or you bring them all up. They maintain their relative position. This is also great if you wanna adjust several buses. You know, let's say you think that the mix of your bass and your guitars are too low relative to the drums. Oop, but you can maintain their relative balance. Super powerful, super useful, long overdue, but it's here. Um, the third thing, the adaptive grid. This is like one of those things that you might not even notice. It works so well and becomes such a part of your workflow. I mean, at first it's actually, you're like, it takes a second to readjust your mind because you're used to changing the resolution as you zoom in and zoom out. But once you start, once it starts doing that automatically for you, it just works really well. It's efficient, it's fast. I don't have a lot to say other than it's great. Um, the final major change is that you can, there's now a button everywhere to add a device or an audio track to each screen. Um, now you could always do this in the past by right clicking and it would bring up the menu, but having a button there certainly helps and makes it a little easier. Um, and related to that, there's actually a super secret uh, update to Reason 10.2 that is one of my favorites. It's a pet peeve a bit that when you're now on the now when you're on the sequencer page, um, if you click on the icon, the device icon on the far left, it will bring you to that rack extension page, which is fantastic uh, because so often it was hard to get. If you had a really big session, you're like, and you've got, you know, five Thors in it. Like, how do you, which one is it? And then, but now you can just double click on the image when you have the sequencer track and it'll take you to the rack and you can tweak it or do whatever you want to do from there. So that's, that might actually be one of my favorite features. So um, I'm going to take, ask you to take a second to like and subscribe to the channel just because I'm going to be doing a lot more content that will teach you how to use these new features in Reason 10.2. Um, also, I always, not always, but I frequently give out uh, combinator patches and loops and things like that. So be sure to subscribe so you can get those for free. And um, now let's just talk about the overall Reason 10.2 and my thoughts. Um, I would say this is the best version of Reason. That's kind of, it's better than Reason 10.1 and it's better than Reason 10 and every other version. It just improves on what we like um, and it added a lot of features that I have personally been requesting on this channel for a while. I hope that Propeller actually keeps up with this model of doing sort of these interface modernizations and streamlining in the smaller versions and then adding features in the major versions. I think the user interface in Reason is still, even with all these changes, it still is maybe a generation, maybe not a full generation, but it's definitely not as powerful or as intuitive as you would find in some of the other more state-of-the-art DAWs. Uh, and this is totally a step forward in that direction. There's still a lot of things I'd like to see changed. I made a big old list back in the day and I'll put a link up to it, but this is a huge step forward. I love it. Now, the bigger question is, should you upgrade to Reason 10 if you haven't done so already? I would say no. Um, first of all, I think if you were going to have upgraded, Reason 10.1 was the time to do it because they were giving you a free copy of the drum sequencer at the time, and that drum sequencer is awesome. Uh, but now they're not giving anything away for free. At least they haven't announced it at press time. Not to say that, I just would say that don't upgrade to 10 right now, because if it wasn't enough to convince you to do it with the free drum sequencer, I don't think multi-lane editing necessarily sells it. Um, but they've also announced that there will not be another version like a version of Reason for Purchase, for example, Reason 11 is not coming out this year. So um, you also have to decide whether or not you want to wait probably another year from this point until Reason 11 comes out, if it comes out next year. I don't know that it will, but they've said it's not coming out this year. So you have to determine how long you want to wait for the next full version of Reason and to see what they might add. We know some of their roadmap, and that includes performance improvements related to VSTs coming in the 
probably in the winter, I would imagine, since it's already the first day. Well, it's past the first day of fall. Um, that was this weekend. So, um, knowing that you would have this version for like eight months, it might might be worth it, or it might might be worth it to wait. I, it's not a choice that I can make for you, um, but I would say that this is the best version version of Reason that I've used, and I thoroughly recommend it. So, hope you enjoyed this. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope you got those free downloads for the combinator patches and loops and samples and stuff. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.